Hey, good morning. This is the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. Hi. We call it a virus. The ONA virus. Yes, we do. Basically how it works, if you enjoy what you're hearing on this fine radio program, you tell a friend. And, and that spreads. And that's how the virus spreads. An audio version of the bird flu. And then the show gets more gooder. And then we get more money. Is that how it works? Absolutely. Who are we kidding? I don't think the listeners care about that, though, as much as we do. I don't think the listeners want to hear that, but it's about time we tell them that. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're staying on until we get $600 million each. Absolutely. Each, not split. Gonna make that Howie money. <sighs> Good old Howie. Woo-hoo-hoo. Was babbling on a show about us uh, on Friday, I guess. The pests have turned us on. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, 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 uh, they informed us. Yes. The pests like to inform us when things are going awry out there in Radio Land. The pests keep us um, informed of all situations. Situations. There are, they're all over the place. That go on. They work for the competition. Mm-hmm. They work for all these TV uh, stations in New York City. They're they embedded. They are everywhere. They're embedded. It is Project Mayhem. Project Mayhem is uh, unfolding in front of your eyes. Yeah. Yes, the radio version. It's the closest thing to Fight Club. We that just, is real. We just do our show, and then all of a sudden we get all sorts of reports after every single radio show. Yeah. And then uh, we go through all the information, the, commu- the communique. Here's what this guy did. We got to sort out the accurate stuff from the bullshit. That's right. Intelligence people pawing over dossiers. Yeah, we got to (laughs) throw the Opie and Anthony filter into everything. Right, right. But they're attacking message boards. They're letting us know what this guy said on his blog. Oh, yeah. What this website is saying about us. We're informed. The latest news articles on us. It's very nice. It's very informed. We absolutely love our pests. Mm-hmm. And we love the fact that they're getting smarter and smarter every day. It's uh, like training. They're kind of learning by trial and error what works, what doesn't. they got uh, a little hierarchy going on. There's always a little infighting, which is good, competition. Keeps them honest. Keeps them honest. Keeps them working hard. Uh, there's always somebody underneath the top dog trying to knock him off his perch. That's right. <laughs> That's how it should work, right? That's insane. So, uh... The little militants. We got some Howard Stern communique. Yeah. And we just love playing this stuff because he's just out of his fucking mind. Yeah. I think uh, the facelift is really starting to take its toll on the guy. Think it cut off some circulation to the brain? I think it's made him more delusional, that's what about for sure. The, what about the lipo sucking from under his chin? The waddle? Because he had that done, too. He got rid of the waddle? Yeah, he got the waddle, uh, the nose job, uh, what, facelift? Yeah, that's all great. That's all... Uh, that's the hair? A, that's everything you want from your radio host. The teeth, right. Uh, the Yeah, the laminates or something. Then the hair extensions... Well, we were, and hair dyeing. Well, we were told years ago that he adds hair. Yeah. A fine client that was uh, advertising on our old show claims that good old Howie adds a lot of hair. Yeah, adds it in every so often. And then there's the hair coloring. Hair coloring. You got to do that because there's no... There ain't no... I defy... Find me one f- over 50-year-old man that doesn't at least have some gray at the temples. Just stop it. Stop it. Well, that's uh, that's what you want in your radio host. A faggot. I mean, if that's what you want to <laughs> that, do. That gets his hair done at the parlor. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But again. <laughs> that wears it, Boy Scout uniforms. It just makes you look a little hypocritical and a little against everything you railed against um, mi- building the career, you know? Right. It was always about <coughs> pointing out these Hollywood types that do this stuff. That get the cosmetic surgery and act like they didn't get it. How many times have you heard that during the golden years when uh, Stern used to be good? Mm-hmm. Uh, how many times did you hear about um, this one leaving his wife for the trophy girlfriend and then the kids getting in some kind of trouble because of it? And then all of a sudden, all this is unfolding as, in his own life. And I think it, I think it's, he's getting a little crazy about it. Well, he had some fun things to say about us and our company. All right. What could he possibly say against I? I whatever he could say about us, 
It's very hard to bash XM when you're working at Sirius. When is he going to like actually do a radio show and stop like trying to bash everybody? And he's already claiming that uh, the government is going to, you know, uh, regulate satellite radio. Because of him. So there's, you know, so there's hours and hours of stuff he could talk about there instead of actually doing a entertaining radio show. Well, the the past 10 years, uh, and this is as per his confession, he's done subpar radio. He said that. We have audio of him saying, I did subpar radio for 10 years because of... The uh, reason he gave was the government stepping in, blah, blah, blah. Now you're on a meeting where there's no government stepping in to regulate you, and he's still doing the same thing. Like all this promise of this great new show on this unregulated medium just isn't coming true. The people aren't hearing it. And the reviews Um, on the new show are absolutely horrendous. They're abysmal. And it's not like this guy had two years off and came into radio and needed, you know, a couple of uh, weeks or months to build up to speed or anything. He was doing a show. I thought the first few weeks on XM were great for us. They what are you getting stunk at? on <laughs> ice. <laughs> thank God we weren't talking to anyone. Oh, thank God they had us under lock and key on some premium service that, like, 15 of our... Of our uh, uh, greatest fans were subscribed to. Hugh Panero had us so <laughs> buried within the service, you couldn't even find us. I uh, Jesus! I got radios for all, my whole family, and subs went up fifty percent. Right? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Did they, were they a little frightened about what we were going to do they under sh- lock and key? They really thought we had devil horns. Thank God! And then they finally uh, came to their senses and opened us up to the full platform. And, and uh, then our, since then, it's and, been. And then our stupid critic said, "Well, that proves that that proves that they're failing miserably on satellite radio." Let Thank me you. tell you something about Opie and Anthony. If Ladies they and were being successful... Ladies and gentlemen, angry typing guy. The angry company typing guy, everybody. would have kept him on the premium. One of my favorite characters. <laughs> <laughs> angry typing guy. I just love these delusional asses out there that think they know something. Yeah. Taking us off the premium meant that we were actually being successful. We were doing well. And we weren't wanted... scaring the company right. like they had to fire us because we were uh, so evil uh, that nobody was buying XM because of us. See, because it, it, following the logic, if if we failed miserably when we were on the premium channel, yeah. For for the new XMers, you know, there was a there was a thing where you f- sign up for the service, and then there was a couple channels you could go. Oh, I'll add this, this, and this. You yeah. know. But if that was the truth, that the reason they took us off the premium channel was because we were failing miserably, wouldn't they have just fired us at that point? Yeah. You stupid ass that types hard on their fucking <laughs> typewriter. And talks funny as he does it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a big thing. But, uh, yeah, we finally you know got off of that and was open up to the platform. It's been nothing but... Uh, uh, growth since then. Absolutely. Amazing. And Absolutely. Then, and then you got um, Howie. He was doing a show uh, one week, a couple of weeks later. He's doing his new show, the one that's been hyped and pumped and, and talked about and on the news, and he's done interviews, and all we heard was how spectacular, revolutionary was a word that came up a lot, um, cutting edge that this was going to be. And, all, and I'm not even talking about... The Opie and Anthony sheep or any of this. I'm talking about hardcore Stern fans. We got our guys out there in the field. They uh, they report to us with uh, message boards from hardcore Stern fans. They come up and say, hmm, this just ain't doing it. It ain't it. Where is it? Where's the show? Because uh, now it seems he's just talking about being shut up again. Well, yeah, the front page of the post today, uh, I guess he's being censored already over there. Now, I don't know what to make of this. This, to me, sounds like a way he can do the show he used to do, which was just get on and pretty much spend uh, three hours or so bitching about something. About something. That's the, what he's done. That's his number one thing he does on a show, is Wh- just bitch about how he can't do a radio show. Those ten years that he said he was doing subpar radio, it was ten years of bitching about things he can't do because of some overpowering uh, uh, entity. Right. Well, the cover of the New York Post says, Mouth Trap. Stern will have to clean up his act on Sirius. Howard Stern may be coming uh, down with a a serious, spelled like the company, 
case of the bleeps. Can, may I? Yeah. Uh, high level executives of the satellite broadcaster are developing an internal standards and practices document that will set boundaries for Stern and other shock jocks the post has learned well yeah I mean because they they hired guys that aren't that creative and are just known for being very very dirty and uh, and they're realizing that's not getting the job done yeah you know Actually, there's more to it that I'd rather not uh, say right now. Oh. But how their whole system is uh, set up, they're pretty fucked. Yeah. They're pretty fucked. See, we took care of all that when uh, we started XM. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say right now. We'll have more on that as uh, the days Let go on. Let the speculation threads uh, start. Thank you. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so he'll, he'll spend this whole show today bitching that uh, you know now Sirius is uh, censoring him. And then there's uh, Barron's that just came out and basically just kills the company. Absolutely kills the company. Barron's, uh, oh, that's not a reputable uh, uh, Dow, uh, Dow Jones uh, uh, business uh, magazine, Robin. Barron's. I've never heard of it. <laughs> this is pretty much um, one of the top three Wall Street Publications. Yeah, we we better get this article up on all the uh, the fan sites. He's and on, the he's big on, headline. He's on the he, uh, the front page of Barron's. You never want to be on the front page of Barron's with this headline ever. Don't bet on Howard. Um. Well, it's a whole article, basically. Uh, you know, showing by just cold hard facts why facts. why XM is so much better than uh, the little doggy company. Dude, I read that article. There's there's graphs in it. There's pie charts. There's pie charts and graphs. I, I was no speculation, on, just the cold, hard numbers. Real facts. Not idiots in front of microphones that think that just because they're talking in the mic that it's the truth. <laughs> this show. <laughs> I'm talking about cold, hard facts from Barron's. That's right. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't looking good. Their numbers. So it was a pretty bad day for Howie and that cute little company over there. Bark! Bark! They're on the front page basically saying they have to censor their, their top dog. And Barron's is actually uh, absolutely killing the company and showing everyone why XM is the better company. Now, uh, I see I see they're censoring him. Curse is foiled again for Stern. Curse is foiled again. Get it? Mm-hmm. Oof. Uh, we got a little mention in here. XM, which is now the home to Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony... Shock, shock. Confirmed that it had its own guidelines in place for some time now. Really? But declined to provide details. <laughs> really? All right, look. <laughs> if we could get Elo or someone to tell us what these guidelines go Because as I look back on what we've talked about over the past almost year and a half that we've been here yeah. on satellite radio, I'm thinking the only boundary that really is in effect here is is if me and Opie decide to fuck each other right on this console, <laughs> that could... And I'm not even sure of that one. Well, and that's where we would finally censor ourselves. Maybe self-censoring would <laughs> right. come into play. I'm just being hypothetical here. But what boundary could there... Have, take any clip Jim Norton has uttered on this program. Right. There should be a boundary. I'm for boundaries on Jimmy Norton. There have been things we have done on this show. I'm just waiting for bat phones to go off like oh. crazy. And, and I look behind me and go, we can't get away with this. And this is all you hear. <laughs> Nothing. That's from... what that's what you hear from the manager's office. Nothing. That's it. Oh, oh, uh, th this just in from uh, XM Washington. All right, we'll keep talking about it. Doesn't seem to be a problem. <laughs> oh my God! I will have to uh, call that statement uh, hogwash. I am calling Bravo Sierra. Bravo Sierra is stronger, one notch up from hogwash. I know that's the corporate's job to to look responsible. Is. Of course but, it is. But the reality is, uh, we have done some horrific things on this brand new show. They want to be able to go. Yeah. Um. Hi, General Motors. Yeah. XM. No. No. There are restrictions in place on those boys. Don't worry about it. You sell those vehicles with the XM in there, and you don't have to worry about anything. Thank you. There Goodbye. you go. And then uh, the reality is, uh, you know, make a little joke about an Amber Alert or something. And uh, here's the response from D.C. Hello? Help. Help.
All right, it's fine, I guess. Keep up the good job, boys. <laughs> That's what I hear every day. I get an email in my box every day about how the show ruled. That's right. That's all I hear. That's all I care about. I don't hear this. <laughs> Ever. No. No mouth trap here. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> anyway, good old Howie was at it on Friday, and uh, and thanks to one of our pests, here it is. I was watching a uh, private parcel last night on VH1, and a uh, old uh, XM tried to pull a slick one on you and have a couple spots within the mix there. But uh, XM's, uh, a, XM's a really strange company, I'll tell you. They are strange um, if they're they profitable, that... um, successful, uh, growing at a faster rate than you. Uh, then I guess uh, it's strange. No, they're a smarter company, Howard. That might have been what he meant. They're a smarter company. They know a lot of potential uh, satellite radio people are going to be watching your stupid movie. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you advertise on that. Of yeah. course you do. That's how it works. And, and, and it worked perfectly because now you got a guy calling up your show to talk about our company because they saw the commercial during your fucking movie. It, it worked, worked perfectly for our company. It worked. Oh, it's not pretty, but it worked perfectly, didn't yeah. it, Howie? Yeah, they um, they think that kind of stuff gets to either me or to the company, and you got to understand something. It only highlights what we have going on around here. You know, it's so funny when uh, we were doing our farewell show with thousands of people. All right, I haven't heard this yet. Yeah, and I swear to you, I did not hear this yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and I know he's going to take a shot at us, obviously, or the pest wouldn't have sent this in. Yeah, when Howie did his farewell show. On uh, K Rock, when he, you know his last show on uh, commercial radio, yep. we decided to get under his skin. Absolutely, yeah. we had hundreds and hundreds of our pests show up at the fucking event and cause holy hell. Yeah, we got signage on uh, the moving trucks that he hired. We got signage all over the subway stops. All anything that had a sign, we had our logo, XM logo, Opie and Anthony, Wow stickers. Every shot that was on the news that night. You saw an O and A sign somewhere in the crowd. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you why we did that. One, yes, to get publicity for our show because mm -hmm. we're publicity whores. Absolutely. Yes. And the other thing, which is just as important, to get under that fucking asshole skin. Yeah. And I guarantee you, I know for a fact, we got under his skin and we wrecked his cute little day. There's video of it. We wrecked his fucking day. There's video of it when his bus turns the corner. And his crowd dwindles to pretty much nothing because they were all in one area to watch him give his little speech. And then he hopped on a bus, and I guess he was expecting uh, the uh, Broadway to just be lined with fans the whole way down to the Hard Rock Cafe. Just wasn't the case. The second that bus turned off of the initial road that he was on, the crowd dwindled to, to barely nothing. anything. To nothing. And all it was was a, a, a sidewalk full of ONA signs and fans holding up their signs. And he had to turn his head uh, as to not acknowledge it. It was obvious. He saw it. He knew what it was all about. We have our people in place, and we wrecked his fucking day. It ain't uh, 95 anymore. It's not uh, 1992 anymore. It's, it's not a book signing with 25,000 people showing up. Yeah, there were a lot of people down there where he was giving his speech. Uh, it weren't the old days, that's for sure, and you sure know that, Howie. And we accomplished exactly what we wanted to that day. Hey. Get under your skin and get some promotion for us, Opie and Anthony. Even uh, one of our guys ended up on the local news here in New York. Yep. So they had to talk about Opie and Anthony on the news and XM. So we accomplished what we wanted to do. Let's hear what he has to say about this. Understand something. It only highlights what we have going on around here. You know, it's so funny when uh, we were doing our farewell show with thousands of people in the street. I kind of felt, and this is going to sound weird to say, but I felt bad for Opie and Anthony. I mean, I honestly felt their desperation in trying. <laughs> Dude, you're such a fucking liar. Oh. oh. As soon as you saw that crowd of Opie and Anthony fans, which was a huge fucking crowd for your fucking mm -hmm. event, your face, even though you've had a facelift, basically, <laughs> was melting. You were so pissed off. All that work you had done started, you know, you started having a droopy face. You were so bummed out. 
And maybe you should that spend... That would rain down your fucking parade. Maybe you should spend a little less time feeling sorry for us and uh, thinking about your own show. We've been here. We've been on satellite radio for uh, almost a year and a half, doing very well, very successful, this program for XM. We're doing fine, Howie. You're the one that has a lot to prove, and uh, initial uh, reports coming in, it ain't quite working out uh, as, as, as to the hype that was put out. And as far as feeling sorry for people... I think we were jumping on the we feel sorry for Howie uh, bandwagon before uh, you you were feeling sorry for us. It's a little more, you know something? It's a little easier to feel sorry for a guy that had upwards of 10 million listeners uh, nationwide go to a company that has 3 million listeners total. And believe me. If 10% of them are tuned into you at any given moment, which you're lucky. Which would be a huge number, Which by would the way. be a huge number. If serious, if they have three million listeners, ten percent tuning into Howie would be a huge number. This isn't bullshit. This is the way it is. So uh, don't uh, don't feel sorry for us. We're fine over here. It's a fact that we're talking to more people than Howard Stern right now. Yeah, it's an absolute fact. Yep, absolute fact. So don't uh, don't, don't feel please sorry don't for feel us. sorry for us. Take that time and energy to maybe do a show. And not feel sorry for us. I kind of felt, I, and this is going to sound weird to say, but I felt bad for Opie and Anthony. I mean, I honestly felt their desperation in trying we to get... We talked about that. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, they, they blew their career. Before they actually got big, they, you know, that's probably, they would have had a big career, but they really screwed up big time. Well, because they're, des they're desperate guys. I mean, they, they're so desperate to be famous. So they showed they had like 10 or 20 fans show up with signs. <laughs> I had to lose some channels. Yeah, they, they had some, they had some <laughs> signs and stuff. And it, 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 everyone just kind of looked at each other and said, "This is so sad. They want to be, they kind of want to tie in with us in a weird way." Well, or, everywhere you went, shut up, Paul. They tried to be there. Yeah, it was kind of weird. And, and XM, similarly, like buying some ads during private parts, like I know they think that like irks someone or it's going to maybe like, wow, we really got them. It, it looks desperate. We did get you. You're talking about you, idiot. Yeah, that's the how same it works. There was only 20 Opie and Anthony fans there. You're just not being honest once again, Howie. Yeah. Once again. We, wow. We wrecked our careers. I think our careers are just fine. We're doing just fine. Took a little different path than we thought we would, but <laughs> we're doing fine. Yeah, we had fine. to go into rebuild mode. I didn't know we were going to uh, get fired. Uh, you know, he's right there. That career blew up. The terrestrial radio career, for the time being. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, we're on a different path than we thought we were going to be when we were on terrestrial radio, but... No less gooder, I'll tell you that. It is a hell of a lot easier uh, mentally to come in here on a daily basis and be able to talk about anything we want than it was on Terrestrial. All right. Let's move on to the next little... Uh, little <laughs> little thing here. XM's going to really have to figure out a way to market themselves now because they see what's happening. XM had a chance to be the only... You know what? They talk about the amount of money I was paid to come to Sirius. If XM had been brilliant, they would have stopped at nothing to get me over there. But they were wise asses. They really thought that I'd go with them because they were uh, the leader, so to speak. They had the jump on Sirius. They really thought... Did you realize the game would have been over? Had they signed me? They would have oh, yeah. had the biggest Christmas. Sirius would have run flat and... and and, and they would have had the whole ball game. There'd be no second satellite. Company. Sirius might have been forced out of business. That's You're right. right. Yeah, yeah oh. they would be approaching Dubai. nine million listeners. That's right. At this point, possibly more. And yeah. the fact of the matter is that wrong. Parents... Hold on, hold on. Wrong. Fucking numbers, man. They love twisting these numbers around. Approaching nine million because, and there's the logic. We have six. They have three. So they're saying if Stern came here, XM would have nine because you could take the three that uh, Sirius had because everyone on Sirius subscribed for Howard, right? No. That's just false. It's the rate of growth that Sirius had over the course of uh, the years that they've been in business. Everyone that subscribes to Sirius isn't subscribing to Howard. They make it sound like they came on and then every subscription that uh, came in for Sirius was due to Howard. 
Just not the case. That would be why then cannot we say we have been on there were how many uh people when Just we over signed two on? million. Two million. There are now six million. Opie, we are responsible for, for four million listeners for signing four million up. Listeners. So if we went to Sirius, they would have had seven million uh people. Seven million subscribers. It no. It doesn't work that way, Howie. You're not responsible for everyone that's over there. Some people just want to hear fucking 70s music. Some people want to hear classic rock. Some people want to hear whatever else is going on over there. Not listening to you. Not everyone's listening to you. Like we said, if it's 10%, you're lucky. The matter is that their arrogance is incredible. And when I met with them, they were, they were a little bit arrogant. And I said to them, you don't understand. I'm not, I'm not even sure I want to go back into radio. And this serious came... They were a little arrogant. How smart they didn't... were they not to pay you over a half a billion dollars for a has-been? For a fucking has-been. Yeah, that's right, Howard. A has-been. Maybe you were worth that much. Maybe in 92. Maybe. A half a billion dollars. Infinity wasn't even willing to pay that. Back then, at your at your peak, it's when not. you were peaking, they weren't. The move of desperation, that desperation that you talk about, is serious satellite radio putting all their eggs and their money in one basket, you, and it's failing. It's failing, asshole. It ain't, it ain't even working out for you or the company. It's not arrogance. It was smart. It was intelligence. It's looking at a product and saying, you know something? This product, Howard Stern... Is that worth product this much, is worth this much. this much. You're not going to uh, pressure us into paying that much. Go to the stupid company that's hemorrhaging cash and uh, 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 go for your payday over there. Do your lousy, has-been, old hat show over there for a half a billion dollars. It ain't going to work here. You want to call that arrogance? I call it a smart business move. And when are you going to break it to your listeners that you're only going to do four days a week? They're going to be real happy when they find that's part of your deal. Yeah, how about that one, Howie? But Mel basically begged you not to do that yet until the company gets uh, moving a little forward. Until maybe some good reviews come in? What, when are you going to break so you it put to your audience shows? that you're only going to do four days a week and you're only doing about nine months of radio a year? When do you, t when do you drop that little uh, secret on your fans? Half a billion dollars and you expect it to waltz into XM? Just because your name is Howard Stern and you were huge back in the early 90s, that XM was going to just open the checkbook like Sirius did and pay you a half a billion dollars? You call that arrogance? That's a smart business move. It's a smart business move. That's what XM does. They don't put all their eggs in one basket. Would we love, Opie, would we have loved for XM to make the entire platform built around Opie and Anthony. Of We're course. nothing but Opie and Anthony uh, commercials. Of course. of course. It's a great ego boost. But as far as business goes, quite frankly, there are plenty of people around this country who could give a flying fuck who Opie and Anthony are. They don't know who Opie and Anthony are. They're not going to buy XM because Opie and Anthony is on it. And the same thing goes for you, Howard. You have the name, yeah. But... So a, a lot of people just don't give a shit. And they're not going to subscribe to a series just because you're there. And we're talking the majority of people in and the country. the funny country. thing is, Howard really, really wanted to come to XM. But yeah. they, weren't just, they weren't willing to pay. Not going to pay. So you went for the payday. Congratulations on That's that. That's it. But you know damn well the little doggy company is, is light years behind XM. You know that. Look at the technology end of it. You absolutely know that. And you're bitter. You're bitter that they didn't open up their, uh, their pocketbooks. You got all the money, but you're with the lemon company with shit equipment that people have to deal with. You don't even have a portable unit that gets live friggin' radio. You can't even really do uh, channel blocking. And that's why the fucking government's coming after your little company. Yeah. And that's why you're going to have to be censored, you ass. Yeah. And this Sirius came in and said, we want you. And here's what we need to do. Because they were um, desperate. And XM nice guys. I mean, they, they were, they, they're not bad people. They're trying their best. But they really don't step up to the plate. This is the second go-around I had with them. And they just don't step up. They just miss. You know, buying an ad in private parts is fine. I don't care either way.
Yeah, I don't do. think it's going to sell one radio for them. <laughs> I think they think it bothers me in some weird way. And i got to tell you something, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me at all. We've been surprisingly unbothered by anything. Yeah, Terrestrial yeah. radio, the other satellite company, we're just happy to be Hole. here. Yeah, keep telling yourselves that, that it doesn't Shut bother up. you. I just Hole. spent 20 minutes on your show talking about how it doesn't bother you. How it doesn't bother you. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. They think it's some weird way it's going to bother me, Robin. <laughs> bother you we know for a fact this shit bothers it you. does bother that, them that's why we do it and it's a, it's a game to us we love getting into this under this guy's skin and it's a smart move business-wise to put a commercial everyone it's been in the press all over the place that howard is going to satellite <laughs> truth of the matter is there are still people confused as to where he went is going people don't even know uh there are people out there that have no idea satellite exists they have no idea there's two companies. They have no idea these things. Those people will look at an XM satellite radio ad during Howard's thing where you're going to get a lot of people maybe interested uh, in buying satellite radio and see an ad for XM satellite radio. When they go to a Best Buy or something, they're going to go, hey, I'm, I, I want that uh, XM. There you go. It worked. One subscription. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's just, it's thing. that's how... But that's how uh, successful marketing is done. You look for, you look to market you look to the people that are are, are out there that are going to buy this. Absolutely. And the people that are watching private parts are probably of the demo that will be will bu be buying satellite radio. And not all will buy for Howie. Yeah. So we'll take our little piece and continue to be the leaders. By the way, there you go. You got one more good quarter ahead of you, Howie, and then watch the numbers. And when those new, uh, those new units pop in the stores, in March, holy shit, they're coming out in March. And uh, believe me, I am the last thing. Uh, I, I, I I am not a company man. Believe me, they tell me about shit, and I forget about it the next day. <laughs> I have no idea. I've seen these things. I've used them. They are amazing. At they're, CES, they're tiny, amazing, and Sirius keeps trying to push the fact that they have these units, and they lie to their uh, uh, people. They lie. They try to present it in an ad through this double talk that it is an actual uh, on-the-go satellite receiver that you can take with you and listen to live programming. It isn't. They do not have one of those. They don't have one on the horizon. It's not, uh, while we have already had one, the MiFi, this newer one is so small, it's the size of a goddamn phone, it's smaller, it's like a credit card, uh, and, and, and it uh, records uh, MP3s. And you know how we got that done, by the way? By not wasting the money on one show. Yeah. How about you take a half a billion dollars and put it in research and development for new uh, equipment, for, for uh, instead of outsourcing your uh, technology, how about you have uh, your own people that, uh, that are dedicated to the company that come up with uh, new ways and new things and new products? That's what XM did. Is that the smart move or is that stupid, Howard? Is that arrogant uh, or is that uh, the smart move? I see it as the smart move. For people for are walking the streets of, of major cities and listening to the Opie and Anthony show live uh, through uh, ear pods like uh, like uh, an iPod, and they need a goddamn refrigerator to listen to the Howard Stern show. Is that really arrogant that they didn't pick you up, Howard? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Howard, is it Howard <laughs> really, or does it make it just makes good business sense? Yeah, you ass. Everything he said. Translates in everything he's called arrogant, stupid, trying to get to him. Everything is good business sense. If you just ask, maybe Barron's Magazine, one of the premier Wall Street magazines that say, don't bet on Howard, right on the cover. Perhaps they know a little more about uh, good business. All right. There's a mad scramble to capture my audience. And the delusion of XM thinking that... Uh, Putting an ad on private parts makes a difference to me. Well, I thought it didn't bother you. You're still talking still about Still talking it. about it. didn't bother him. And the truth of the matter is, it really isn't just about getting to you, Howard. It's smart business. It's not always about you, idiot. Okay? Putting an ad on private parts makes a difference to me. 
It's ludicrous. They've got to develop their own identity now. They can't merely react to what I'm doing. Wherever I go, hanging up a sign, it looks sad. It ain't about me. you got to go out and sell subscriptions exactly. and get people to listen. Which XM is doing? How about two to one blowing you away? How about Shut up. still a two to one lead? We're doing it. Of course your stupid company was going to have a hot quarter because you were coming aboard. We understand that. But you know where company. it goes from there? It goes down from there. Don't people understand they had a big quarter? I know this is a ridiculous business talk. Their quarter was big around Christmas because Howard, for 14 months, was promoting the fact that he was going to Sirius uh, after Christmas. So their Christmas shopping and quarter was huge because, yes, he, the guy has a huge fan base on terrestrial radio. And the fact uh, is we made our number as well. Right. So we're, we're doing exactly what we needed to do as a company. Yeah, it didn't hurt XM. It didn't hurt XM. There was nothing. No listeners ran away from subscribing to XM because Howie went to uh, Sirius. His hardcore fans that were listening to him on Terrestrial bought, and that pushed the numbers up. Now, where do you go from there? Is the next quarter just as big from people going, oh, Howard's there? Let me buy again. Well, no. And, but the reality is they'll probably have another good quarter. Definitely. It ain't going to be as big as oh, the absolutely Christmas not. quarter. Absolutely not. Nowhere and, it near. Only, and, and my point is it goes down from there. As opposed to XM and this program, which has done nothing but build and build over the time we've been on. Because we, uh, well, when we're not doing this, we do a show right, <laughs> that and we will. people want to listen to. And uh, they tell their friends, and more people. Uh, people. And the reality subscribe. is, we're still the leader in this in this fine forum. Right. We're still the leader. XM is still way ahead of the little doggy uh, company. So we're doing our job over here. Let them uh, scramble to try to figure out how to pay. It you. ain't about me. You got to go out and sell subscriptions and get people to listen. Which we're uh, doing. I'm not the I'm not the guy. I mean, you want to you want to sit there and put ads on private parts? Wow, you really rocked me. Let me tell you, I almost couldn't sleep. Still talking about it, Howard. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take one uh, psychology class in college to realize that uh, we absolutely got under your skin. <laughs> of course. <laughs> couldn't sleep because when I heard that, it... Kept you up? you got to understand what a compliment that oh. is to me. Well, you know, the sad thing is Opie and Anthony got another radio show. They wouldn't have known what... Why is that sad, Robin? What? Why is she said something about It's it? sad that we got another radio show? Why? Yeah, it's a lot sadder than me being in an attic putting tin in going, I used to be Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> now now I'd give them that would be sad. <laughs> I was only a few months away from calling up the old Huntington Crescent Club and said, Hey, I could be one of those old caddies I there saw when I was caddy. caddying over there. I still remember what uh <laughs> you what the yardage is. You fucking hole. Is Opie and Anthony got another radio show. They wouldn't have known what to do with satellite coming to it first because you had not done it yet. Right. And now that you have shown... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. She's got to finish. I know, I'm building up to... I got to hear this. Holy shit, I got to hear this. She is the... <laughs> Wait a minute. She is the luckiest broadcaster in radio. Am I getting the luckiest broadcaster in radio? Am I getting the feeling she's saying we've been here almost a year and a half and we haven't known what to do until how it's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit! Our body of work speaks for itself, that's all I'll say. I don't, we don't need to try to defend ourselves. Wow. We've had, we've had a great year in three months. Oh, welcome to the show, Patrice, by the way. by the way, you hey, could have hey, just really? come in, you know, an hour. You could have slept That's what I'm saying. a little late. And I, really I want to apologize. I really want to go out on the sofa and take a nap, I wanna, but I don't want to. <laughs> we're, we're almost done. I want to apologize for the don't racial apologize. epithets that were f flinging through my mind two seconds ago. And it Did almost it? came out of my mouth. It almost came out of my mouth, was the big one. Niggle, it was, in it was the nuclear N-word. <laughs> almost popped out, followed oh by the C-word. Oh, it, my God. I, I swear to you, it was right at the tip of my tongue, she and I held back. She is the luckiest person in, in broadcasting. She adds absolutely <laughs> nothing to his stupid nothing. show. She was there in the beginning because uh, it, it allowed Howard to talk about blacks and this and that and women. A, a lot easier. But now that uh, that shit doesn't matter anymore, she still gets to sit on that show. She's and a do big, fat, black assed albatross. <laughs> That's what you are. 
A big, fat, black marshmallow. <laughs> Sit in your little booth. Sit in your dunking booth. Some people could call me that. And chime it. But you're charming. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in your dunking booth and read the headlines. That's your job. That's your job. Chime in. Reiterate what Howie says with a little chuckle. The sad thing is, Opie and Anthony got another radio show. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have known what to do with Satellite coming to it first because you had not done it yet. Right. And now that right. you have shown them how to generate publicity <laughs> and do all, they just show up to try to grab some of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. And the, the what are you <laughs> talking about? That didn't even really make sense. What is she fucking talking about? Wow. Wow. I just hope that the people hear the dishonesty in this stupid radio show. That's that's all. That's, that's why arrogance. Go, that's why we go off on these uh, these little tangents and go go after these people because they're so fucking dishonest. When we signed with XM, we got all the headlines. Trust me. Yeah, we got all the headlines. Don't worry so much about us, you fucking hole. We we had national interviews on all the hot shows. We were in every fucking magazine. We were on the front page of a bunch of newspapers. We got it all as yeah. well. Don't worry. For about you to it. say that, uh, you know, we, we had to wait for you know Howard to make his announcement and 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 you know so he could show us how how it's done is such bullshit. We sat here That's over a year. Over a year, we sat here, me and Opie, shaking, going, I can't w When? When will Howie be on Opie to show us? And we continue to generate our own headlines and our own stories in the newspapers. Yeah, don't worry about the way we get publicity. Matter of fact, we're doing an interview for the Daily News tomorrow, a big yeah. feature. Don't tomorrow. worry about it. Tomorrow. Little paper in here in New York City called The Daily News. Thank you very much. A big, huge feature. We're doing that tomorrow. And if you look at our career from day one, I think we know how to get publicity. <laughs> They're just fucking dishonest. Yeah. Just babbling assholes. It's, it's, it's sad. And, and what's even sadder is terrestrial radio's reaction to me leaving. All this carrying on just makes me bigger and bigger. Bam. I'm telling Wrong. you, your plan is to make me bigger. We've got momentum. We've got something going on. You here. actually have a plan about you, and there's nobody else mentioned. You know, we have to get on this show or that show. No, you have a plan to roll out information yeah. when it's good for you. Mm. The hole speaks again, and I just throw my arms uh, up and go, all what? I, all I hear is Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 <laughs> That's right, Rob. Wah, 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 Well, uh, that's exactly my point and uh, what I was saying. Wah, 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 I shut up, hole. Wah, 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 wah. Do you think she eats like a pig to cover up the fact that she has no talent in radio? And it bothers yeah. her that she's, uh, you know, cashing that paycheck every night? Nerve-wracked. She's nerve wracked. She's like, holy shit, they, they're not on to me yet. Yeah. I could cash a few more checks. All I have to do is chuckle at what Howard says and sit uh, in my dunking booth. Repeat what he says and with rip and read. Words. Rip and read. And then, yeah. Just read a bunch of stuff. Ugh. One more quick clip and we'll move Still on. Still at it. A real radio show today. Well, they have a very bad problem over at XM because I listen. I'm, I'm XM, privy to this stuff. XM, they have XM, a board of directors XM. that rides their ass whenever they want to make a decision. They are paralyzed. XM. Uh, you Panero very badly wanted to hire me, but he couldn't convince that board to move fast. Uh, I believe so, uh, and it's not his fault. Um, and listen, I was looking. Hey, keeping that door open, aren't you, Howie? <laughs> Howie, keeping that fucking door open, aren't you? Sounds Keeping like that XM door open, that sounds like confidence and faith in your half a billion dollar paycheck given company. Hey, that you Panero, uh, he's, he, I like that guy, he's great. Keep the door open. Don't burn this bridge, idiot. There's only two satellite companies. Don't burn this bridge. Sounds, Good Howie. Sounds like a guy that's a little bitter that he didn't get to go to the better company. The better company. <laughs> and a little uh, insecure that uh, if something happens over there... He'll be able to jump ship. Yeah, that's what that sounds like to me. Yeah, because when your contract's up, XM's going to want to hire a 60-year-old shock jock. 
Ooh, ooh. Can I, I throw baloney at your uh, tits? Uh? I don't think so. Ew, stop it. You're creepy. I don't think so. Paul, um, and listen, I was looking at every aspect when, you, when you're when making a move to sound. By aspect, not just dollar. You know, will they pay me? I was looking at you stop know, it. how fast they crank out radios, what their commitment what? is to programming. What? No, you're not. You looked at the money. You looked at the money. Shut up. You looked at the money. Every other aspect of these companies. One company wanted to pay you half a billion dollars. The other one didn't. That's it. That's it. XM, every other part of XM works out on paper better than Sirius. Everything. And their financials, the technology, the management, everything works out better. And don't take our word for it. Read uh, the latest issue of Barron's. Barron's, you know. That, that uh, 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 little-known uh, publication that covers Wall Street. Barons, you idiot! The guy is a lying sack of cunt. <laughs> That's what you are. Wait, you I, lie! Wait, I got to dump out of that. We got to censor oh, dump out. Uh, we better, we better so, censor uh, that. Uh, we're uh, over the line here. We don't have channel blocking, so we better make believe that we have responsibility here at our company. Not just uh, you know, will they pay me? I was looking at you know how fast they crank out radios what their commitment is to programming and all that stuff. XM's not a bad company. It's just, yeah. and for me, That's this was rich. a better company. This was the place for me. For you. It just seems lazy to me to just rely on commercial-free music as your selling point. Or the Ellen Show. Right. I mean, what's that? Oh yeah. And it's then even awesome. the Snoop Channel is a reaction to the M&M Show. What an asshole. They're like trying to like knock us down because we have Ellen DeGeneres and Snoop. They have Martha Stewart and Eminem. And it's called and Variety. And Eminem doesn't even do anything. They it, just hire yeah. his fucking name. His name. And it's called Variety. Because, uh, Howie, not everyone is listening to Howard Stern. Sorry. And you know something? Some people will tune in and listen to Ellen. Big Ellen fans will tune in and listen to Ellen. As will they listen to that old raggedy convict bitch Martha Stewart over there on your company. People will listen to that. It's just the way it is. But it's, Ellen, part, it's, it's part of the beauty of satellite is that it's not all about one guy. And Ellen Trump's Martha Stewart every oh, time. Stop. Every fucking time. It's whatever. You know, it's, it's just not all about you. And this guy thinks it's all about him. What's that? And then even the Snoop channel is a reaction to the Eminem channel, which well, was a brilliant yeah. move. But that's what I'm saying. All they did was come out and say we're commercial free. Shut and up, everything else has been a reaction to whatever wah, else wah, has wah, gone on. So you mean, wah. you know, it, it, you know, don't 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 just imitate. Initiate something new. Ooh, and and that would be the secret just, to success. Why? And, uh, you know. We'll see what happens. So when we make our uh, next announcement, you'll you'll say uh, that uh, we took your advice, right, Howie? Yeah. yeah. Wait till you hear what XM does next. Wait till you hear what XM does next. Wait till you hear what XM does next. There it was, your, your dose of uh, insincerity, dishonesty, lying with a little fat... Fat black ass hole thrown in for measure. Mm -hmm. It's just getting larger and larger and larger. You are getting so fucking fat. Oh, oh. Ah, and how he's a lying sack of what? Lying sack of cunt. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Better dump out of that. Just dump, please. There's no sincerity there, no honesty. The guy, and, and, and you know something? I feel sorry for him because he's not even being honest with himself. I, I sincerely believe, I think he believes all this shit to make himself feel better so he can sleep at night. And he's not even talking to 10% uh, of his old audience. Nope. Not even 10% of his old audience. Nope. And they'll, nope. they'll have another pretty good quarter. And then what? And then what? Wah, 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 wah. And then what? Oh, I'm and sorry. Ooh. And then everyone starts looking at you going, Ooh. we're paying you this much for what? For what? I like the way the whole tried to twist the fact that even though we were here 
over a year on satellite radio, over a year before Howard hit satellite, that somehow even our satellite show is ripping him off. Right. <laughs> How the hell do That's you spin? That's amazing, isn't it? How do you spin that one? It's amazing. Uh, they have a time machine, Robin. Uh, they took it to the future. And a little uh, secret. D- listen to my show. And a little secret about our contract. Unfortunately, we're on a year-to-year basis. Mm-hmm. So if we were not successful once again in our first year, XM would have easily said goodbye. Boot. Save the money. Spend it on something else. The boot. They would have absolutely given us the boot. The threat of the boot is there. We have to perform. We need to perform. We need to please the audience. That's right. We don't have that cushy contract. They were scared shitless hiring us. Who wouldn't be? That's why in all our in interviews, a church. That's why uh, assholes. That's why in all our interviews we talk about how we still have passion to do this, right? And you know Howard's become lazy, which is just a fact. We have passion to eat. That's right. That's the real. Passion. That's the passion. Food and shelter. That's our motivation. They pretty much tell us every Friday if they're going to pick up the next week of our contract. Right. So we call that passion. That's passion. <laughs> Not as, am I going to be able to afford fuel for the helicopter out to the Hamptons that weekend? Right. That isn't passion. <laughs> but we like to spin it and call it passion. My passion is, in a year, am I going to have a couch with duct tape on the arm again? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> The fact is, we have no choice. We have to put on a great radio show every fucking day. Every day. We, it's the passion to eat. We can't rest one day at this no. new job. They can fire us tomorrow. And not have a problem with it. And we'll just be a blink, blink in the satellite radio. That's it. Business. But, That's what our passion is. But thank the good Lord we're doing just fine over here. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we're going to start our radio show next. Mm-hmm. Patrice O'Neill is here, and we couldn't be happier. We got lots to talk about today. Just walked in the door, Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> Slept a little late. <laughs> What's been going on? <laughs> uh, nothing. Just talking about uh, yeah, cool. I'm sorry, uh, the radio shows, yeah. things like that. My nothing you'd want to get explode. involved in. But, uh, you know, instead of uh, maybe hearing some bitterness in our voices today, why don't you just pick up the latest issue of Barron's? Barron's. Because we back up the shit we say on our show. With cold, hard facts. I believe it's available online, too, complete with the graphs and uh, pie charts. Yeah, and look how impressive everything. the pie charts are. I was very impressed by the pie charts. There were some big words in the Barron's article, so I just went to the charts. And I, I saw that XM colors. had a much bigger piece of the pie. There was the, They were blue. They were colored blue, and then I think the serious was the red, and the blue was bigger. The blue was bigger, and it had a dollop of whipped cream on top. 